If you have a rigid belief system, and that's what an ideology is, because it, its axioms are such that it encompasses all of reality, and then there are details left outside that don't seem to fit into that reality, well, then you ignore them. But what if they're embodied? What if they're people who are objecting to the way you think? Well, the equivalent to repressing evidence that runs contrary to your theory is the murder of people who object to what you say. And those two things are linked much tighter than you would think. You know, you might think, well, I would never do something like the communists did in, 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 in the, what, the, the evangelization of my beliefs. But the truth of the matter is, is that in general, people will do such things if they're granted the opportunity and provided with the proper apparatus. From Milton. This is from Paradise Lost. Milton wrote Paradise Lost just before the rise of the nation states, and Milton also had the intuition that there was something wrong with rationality, and he identified rationality with the mythology of Satan. And in the mythology of Satan, Satan was represented as the highest angel in God's heavenly kingdom. So you can think about that as the highest psychological function, who had rebelled against God and, that, and was then cast into hell. And the, the idea, there's an idea that's being expressed by Milton. He was, he was one of the most, he was one of the foremost poetic geniuses of the English language, Milton and Shakespeare. And what Milton was trying to understand was, what is the nature of evil? And his representation <clears throat> gathered up the dreamlike theories of evil that had been collected around all of Western civilization for thousands of years. And his hypothesis was this. Evil is the force that believes that its knowledge is complete and that it can do without the transcendent. And as soon as it makes that claim, it ex instantly exists in a place that's indistinguishable from hell. And it could get out merely by admitting its error, and it will never do that. Solzhenitsyn describes the reactions and actions of Communist Party members who were devoured by the system, because that often happened. The, 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 the prison system, the gulag system, was very indiscriminating. You could land there for good reasons or bad, and the bad reasons were probably better, because the punishment was more severe if you were imprisoned for your innocence. And Communist Party members often got vacuumed up, and this was ontologically and existentially intolerable for them because they committed their whole soul to the ideological dogma and then its, its tyrannical aspect picked them up and destroyed them like they were worth nothing. The existentialists of the late 19th century attempted to diagnose the pathology of the human personality at a deeper level, I believe, than anyone else had ever attempted. And their fundamental conclusion was that the destruction by rationality of the evolved systems of meaning that people had previously lived within had undermined the psychological strength of each individual divorced from their own history that led them to be to gravitate towards either nihilism or as a counterposition to gravitate towards totalitarianism the whole 20th century played out the pendulum swing between nihilism and totalitarianism and in the background the existentialists and the psychodynamic theorists were putting forward a theory which was that if people lived up to their own possibility and held on to their own experience as if it were true and did not substitute for that ideological and consensual beliefs that it would be possible for each person to find a wellspring of meaning that would be a sufficient replacement for what had been lost historically without having to fall into the pitfalls of nihilism or totalitarianism and so you might say well Nihilism, well, that's one thing, because mostly that affects you, although if you're nihilistic, then everyone around you is going to be pulled down as well. But totalitarianism is a whole different issue, because what we know now is that once things become ideologically totalitarian, the next step is mass murder. And, and it, it's, it, the next step is mass murder in, in a manner that makes it appear that the purpose for the ideological rigidification to begin with was the opportunity 
to participate in mass murder. So you know how Hitler died. Hitler lost faith in the German people because they were losing the war. And so he concluded in the waning stages of World War II that Germany should just be destroyed in fire and everything else that he could possibly consume would go with him. And so he died in a bunker underneath Berlin. When it was in flames, he committed suicide. When Europe was in flames. And Hitler was a worshipper of the kind of fire that purifies. He used that mythology of cleansing fire to, to enter into a terrible pact with the, with the entire nation that he followed and led. And Stalin, Stalin just didn't just kill individuals that he pulled off the streets. He killed like all the engineers and all the doctors because he believed they were wreckers. They killed all the good farmers. They killed six million Ukrainians. They moved whole nations of people into Siberia and let them die. And there's every, every bit of evidence there is suggests that what Stalin was doing was practicing murderous genocide on an ever larger scale and hoping that it would culminate in a, a thermonuclear war.